All right, guys, welcome to our second lesson of the first chapter. And the title of this is taxonomy. Sounds like kind of a big word, and we're not really sure what that means yet. Uh, but you've probably seen this before. So the definition of taxonomy is to organize species based on shared traits or genetics. So our definition is organizing species. based on shared, whoops, where did the T come from? Hmm. Lost my white out. There it is. Shared traits or genetics. Well, what's a species? You can't really have a definition. If you have a word in there, you don't know what it means. So when we look at animals, when we look at organisms, a species is a group of animals, I'm sorry, a group of organisms that can breed with one another and reproduce. So we define a species as a group of organisms that can reproduce with itself. So even though dogs uh, look very different, um, big dogs and small dogs can interbreed and have puppies. And so that's how we end up with things like Labradoodles and uh, Cavapoos where we cross uh, dog breeds. But they can all um, interbreed within themselves. If, however, you cross a lion and a tiger, you get what's called a liger. And ligers cannot have babies, they're sterile. So we don't consider lions and tigers to be the same species, they're different species. Um, and this goes all the way down, species go all the way down to bacteria. So we have uh, bacteria are species. So with that many, uh, with millions and millions of species in the world, we have to have some way to kind of organize them and talk about them. And that's what my cake here represents. So this bottom layer is going to be all the living organisms, all living organisms. And up here at the top, our last group is going to be um, species. So that's represented by my flag here. So when we get through all of these different layers of the cake, we go from all living organisms down to one single species. And we have, let's see, so we're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight different levels of organization. So when we're done, we're going to see that all um, eight of these help identify a, a specific species. And we're going to go through the, uh, um, groups that humans belong to. So over here on this side, we're going to do a human taxonomy. T A X. That's an A. Taxonomy, human taxonomy. The first, and why are we doing this now? Um, it seems a little bit out of place. Well, we're going to be talking about a species and a taxonomic. Uh, words all year long. So this is something we really want to do in our first chapter. We have our first group here is called the domain. And domains are pretty simple because there's two. Uh, actually, technically there's three. We're just going to talk about two for now. There's eukarya. And this is going to make more sense because we're going to talk about eukaryotes and there's prokarya. Technically, uh, there's a third one. We're going to save that for later in the year. Eukarya are eukaryotes, prokarya are prokaryotes. This is bacteria, and this is kind of everything else. So, you know, if you think about a bacteria, it's pretty mm, simple. If you think about a you, you're pretty complex. The first thing we do is just we split everything into either a prokarya or a eukarya. We go to kingdom. So for example, in eukaryotes, there's four kingdoms. There's plants, there's animals, there's fungus, and there's something called protists. 
So if we have something that's a eukaryote and that's an animal, we've now cut down about 70% of all the living things on earth because we know we're within those two. Well, within animals, we then go to something called the phylum. There are nine phylum in the animal kingdom. Things like uh, uh, when we talk about later in the year, phylum cnidaria, that's jellyfish. Uh, phylum um, uh, arthropoda, that's bugs and lobsters and things that have jointed legs. So we said earlier, based on shared traits or genetics, so these phylum, if you're a stinger, like a coral or a jellyfish, you're in one phylum called cnidaria. You had jointed legs, you're an arthropoda. We have a spinal cord, so we're in a phylum called chordata. So from there, we go to a class. So in a phylum um, animalia, I'm sorry, uh, chordata, there's different classes. After class, we have order. After order, we have family. And we don't really do a lot with order and family, but genus and species, we do. Genus and species together, these make up the scientific name of an uh, animal. So let's look at, um, let's jump over here to humans and do the human taxonomy. And we'll see how these last two make up the scientific name. So we said that uh, the domain that humans are is eukarya. Eukarya, we have, we're eukaryotic cells. Again, in about two videos, we're gonna talk about what that means. So that means we're either plants, animals, fungus, or um, protists. Well, it turns out we are animals. So we are a part of animalia. In animalia, we have the nine phylum, and because we have a spinal cord, we're part of chordata. Everything with a spinal cord is part of chordata. Um, under chordata, then, we have things like snakes, we have birds, birds are going to be aves, us, um, we have the reptiles, reptilia. Well, everything that has fur and nurses their young. So let's put what some of these traits are. So chordata is a spinal cord. Mammals, uh, the traits that they have, uh, they have fur or hair. They nurse their young with milk, they produce milk. From here, we go to primates, primatae. And that's going to be things like uh, chimps, apes, gorillas, humans, but we all uh, have that same kind of body plan. Um, we have the um, uh, body structure. So that puts us all into primates. Uh, after uh, our family is hom hominidae. H-O-M-O-N-I-D-A-E. H-O-M-O, it should be an O, N-I-D-A-E. So these are all of the uh, um, human type primates. So we're talking about even the ones that have gone extinct. So maybe you've heard of Homo, sap or, um, uh, homo habilis or, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of any other, uh, uh, Neanderthal, Homo Neanderthal, I think is the, another one. But uh, those all belong to hominidae. Our genus is Homo and our species is sapien. That means that your scientific name and my scientific name is Homo sapien. Because we put the genus and the species together. Well, what are some of the other hominidae? Uh, hominidae, I can't say that today. Um, I said something about Homo habilis, uh, the Neanderthals would belong. And those all have the genus Homo, but then when it comes down to the species, we're the only ones that are sapien. So that's how this taxonomy works. Why did I leave some blank um, arrows in the middle here? You need to remember, and you need to know if your tests, domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. We're gonna use a mnemonic. 
spelled M-N-E-M-O-N-I-C. And a mnemonic is a way to help you remember something. So if you remember the mnemonic, do, kings, play, chess, on, fine, gold, stools. That's going to help you remember domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Do kings play chess on fine gold stools? So again, this is just to help you remember the order. So what are our takeaways? We talked about, we introduced today the idea of taxonomy. Well, we're organizing species based on their traits. And we talked about some of these traits. A species is a group of organisms that can reproduce with itself. And then we went through the um, uh, levels of organization. So this is another way of organizing. Not only are our individual organisms organized, but we're looking at a way we can organize them from the outside looking in. And then we went through the uh, taxonomy of humans, Eukarya, Animalia, Chordata, Mammalia, Primatae, Amanidae, Homo, and Sapien, with the scientific name being Homo sapien. Now notice the genus is always capitalized and the species is always lowercase. Lowercase and this is capital. So you can always tell something's a genus and a species if you see a capital and a lowercase. All right, that gets you where you need to go for taxonomy. Thanks for watching.